right here. Uh, and uh, we are starting our today's great webinar. Uh, it's uh, a webinar with uh, our partners, uh, with uh, the great guys from uh, Kenix, uh, today with us, Sibo uh, uh, and Maria, uh, who actually are very great experts uh, in Squash, uh, the tool for test case management. Uh, yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, actually, the topic of our today's webinar is uh, test case management uh, systems, uh, best practices, and uh, some demo from Squash. The guys are just prepared to really interesting one, and uh, I'm sure we all will have some questions and we'll have something to discuss with them around it. Uh, in terms of the topic, um, I guess those ones who are related to software testing field uh, or even just the newcomers, uh, you all know that uh, investing uh, there is such a, a very important system, such as case management systems, which help to organize uh, test cases, to manage them, uh, etc. And uh, we plan to speak about it, to speak about uh, our practice experience in this field, uh, and uh, to speak about one specific tool, which is very helpful in these terms uh, about squash. Uh, Squash is actually a part of a um, big company in France called Phoenix. Uh, the guys who are also QA consultants here, the QA test lab. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it will be also interesting to speak about it as well. With us today also Alina Kiprik, uh, who is uh, QA test lab's expert uh, in, uh, autom in uh, testing, in test case management. So uh, Alina will be our technical guru today with uh, different uh, questions and also interesting information for you about how to manage this. Yeah, cases. hi everyone. Uh, hi Alina, and uh, I guess we can start. First of all, um, I have a question, I guess, to Sibo and Marion. Uh, you guys are part of a big company, part of Henix, and uh, you are a consultant, actually. You are doing testing services uh, around France, and uh, as I know, you are successful ones. Uh, how actually you decided to start with Squash? Why you decided to build this tool? Uh, was it not enough uh, some existing solutions in the market? What was the history of creation? Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Stan. Yeah, as you said before, uh, we are in a consulting activity uh, in uh, software testing since 1999. So we already known uh, what is the tester as a job. And as testers, we wanted to create a tool designed for uh, the testers' needs. So in uh, the beginning of the last decade, we began to create uh, a new tool uh, dedicated to test management, which name is uh, Squash TM. And uh, it's uh, designed to, to, to be uh, clearly for, for the testers the best uh, tool. And uh, after what, we created also Squash TA uh, in the couple next uh, year. Uh, it's an automation tool which allows to interact between uh, Squash TM and Squash TA to automate uh, tests. So the beginning of the story is really the point that we wanted to promote software quality as a sector, as a sector who create value. value and uh, we, we capitalize our, uh, on our, uh, our um, knowledge of the, of the, of the job. Yeah, it's a great story. You're actually, uh, I believe, making this work a bit easier yeah, for all those who are operating in the field of software testing. That sounds really good. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, from uh, our end, to be honest, we get familiar with Squash like uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, and uh, before that, we actually used uh, different uh, Test case management systems that are popular on the market, actually, let's say, the Svelte, Slim, Cadecula. And uh, it was uh, good, but uh, it really depends on the project and uh, on the project requirements. Uh, for example, um, for some specific projects, it's even uh, not necessary sometimes to write these cases or not necessary to use uh, test case management solutions, uh, I guess. Uh, I believe actually Alina knows much better than me. Uh, I'm not really a technical guy, so we'll have uh, a lot of uh, non-technical questions for you all. Uh, and um, first of all, yeah, Alina, I guess you could share with us uh, how usually it looks like to work with test cases, uh, how test case management systems are working, uh, how 
how it's useful actually for, for the customer and for the tester. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some, some questions around it and we'll be able to compare it with Squash afterwards. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Stan. Uh, so hello, everyone, again. Um, I'm Alina. I am a QA lead of mobile program at uh, QATS Lab. And uh, yeah, I wanted to tell you a little on what uh, actually is a test case. Uh, what are benefits um, of testing using test cases? And uh, when you are deciding on what tool to pick, uh, what you should pay attention to uh, when choosing. Um, so first of all, uh, what is a test case? Uh, it is a set of conditions uh, under which a tester can determine uh, whether software satisfies requirements and works correctly. Uh, so uh, we have some, uh, like usually testers have a set of features, uh, functionalities to test. And um, we then uh, need to break down those uh, features into possible scenarios, or they're also called business flows. Uh, for example, registration flow or login flow. Uh, but uh, test scenarios, um, they are awake and they cover a wide range of possibilities. Uh, so we need a test case, uh, a very specific document uh, that is um, aimed for testing one situation uh, that may occur during using of the software. Uh, so for example, when we have a test scenario to check login, uh, feature. Uh, based on that, we can write many test cases, uh, checking positive scenario, uh, such as login with valid data, and uh, negative scenarios, such as login with empty fields, or, or login with invalid data, and many more other cases. Um, another way of uh, documenting what needs to be tested is checklists. And uh, Test cases are sometimes replaced with checklists on um, depending on the project. Um, so I thought it's worth mentioning uh, what are uh, the differences between checklists and test cases. Uh, so checklists, they are more um, vague. They contain just an idea of what needs to be checked. It, um, it may be even very short notes. Uh, they doesn't uh, they don't have detailed steps for testing, um, and because they, are, they contain very brief explanation, um, uh, they require bigger knowledge uh, of the tested software. And uh, checklist, they usually doesn't require any special management tools. Uh, you can actually write them even on a piece of paper. And on the contrary, test cases, uh, they are more formal. Uh, they always contain uh, detailed step-by-step um, -step instructions. Uh, they always contain the expected result. Uh, so the person that is executing uh, the test uh, knows how the software should behave. And um, usually they require test case management systems because um, maintaining them just in Google spreadsheets or Excel documents, it can be a bit troublesome. <laughs> and let's get um, to the structure of the test cases. Uh, sorry, slide, Alina, can I interrupt yeah. you just for a second? Uh, just for me to be a bit practical guy who never works with these practical cases. Um, you mentioned that uh, there are some projects when it's better to use checklists, uh, there are some projects when it's uh, better to use test cases. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you give some examples of on what, on what projects it's better to use, uh, let's say, checklists and there is no sense to go deeper with test cases? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I will be speaking like what um, uh, kinds of projects are better uh, for using test cases, uh, but uh, like uh, based on that, we uh, we should. Uh, it's better to use checklists when we don't have a lot of time for uh, preparing the testing. Uh, when the system um, we are going to test is not complex, because on complex system it's very hard to, and if, especially if there is a big team of testers, it's hard to divide the work. It's hard to. Um, understand all of the features, all of the possible uh, ways that the system should behave. So yeah, it depends uh, on a lot of factors. It also, um, 
usually test cases are very helpful uh, when there is a new a lot of new people added to the team so when you have a checklist you it's hard uh, like it's not impossible but it's just harder to um, onboard a new team member so yeah a lot of different factors uh, yeah, dif yeah. and different yeah, different things to take into account so if you if you it's let's say just simple website or maybe a small mobile app it's we can go through it with a checklist, but uh, when it's something more complex and when it's uh, the team of the testers which is involved with the project, it's better to go deeper. Yep. Yeah, yeah, in general, yeah. Okay, okay. thanks very much. Uh -huh. Okay, so about the structure of the test cases. As this uh, picture here is the scheme, uh, how usually test cases are grouped. Uh, this way you can easily find the needed section, can see uh, the structure of the software you're testing. Uh, test cases, uh, they're usually grouped into test suites and it's usually done by a certain feature they check or requirements um, and uh, test suites, they're combined into a test plan, uh, which combines a set of features that uh, will be tested. Um, so uh, now let's take a look uh, how the test case um, looks like. Uh, it uh, usually has a very strict uh, set of attributes, uh, some required fields that uh, it's impossible to omit them when creating a test case. Uh, let's play a short video of how test case is created. Um, we recorded a very small video. Um, it's one of the existing projects of ours. Uh, we used um, this uh, test case management system just as an example. Uh, we use many different systems depending on the projects. Um, it's uh, actually pretty easy to create a test case. Uh, test case uh, always contains a purpose, so the situation that will be tested. Um, uh, you can uh, also select a section of the software uh, the test is related to. Um, test case also contains priority, uh, which is very useful when you need to uh, filter test cases and, uh, for example, when you need to run uh, test cases of only higher priority, when you don't have enough time, uh, for example. Uh, it also contains preconditions and they describe uh, what state the software needs to be in uh, before you can start the test. And of course, they uh, contain uh, test steps. Uh, it depends uh, on how difficult uh, the project is. Sometimes all steps in the case, uh, they contain one expected result, uh, or uh, as shown uh, here, each step has its uh, own expected result uh, to make sure it's absolutely clear what should happen when executing those steps. And uh, also, test case can contain some comments uh, where tester can leave any important information if needed. Uh, so it doesn't take a lot of time to create a test case, uh, as you see, uh, but this will be a solid source of expected result of um, how software should behave in different situations. Um, okay, so. Uh, let's talk about uh, what actually advantages and disadvantages um, we can uh, face when deciding to make use of test cases. Uh, so first of all, it's um, test cases, they provide uh, us with documented testing process. Uh, having absolutely no documentation makes it hard to uh, track what was tested, um, what was not, uh, we risk to forget something or miss some important features. Uh, plus, when testing is documented, anyone in the team can have access to the test cases, can um, review them, can make changes if needed. Um, test cases, they also uh, provide easy overview of the progress and uh, of the testing results. Uh, most test case management systems, um, they allow us to see how testing is going, how many cases were successfully tested, uh, how many resulted in uh, bugs, in found bugs. Uh, we can create summary reports, uh, compare the results with previous iterations, and uh, that can help in making decisions in whether we have enough time to finish uh, the testing, 
how uh, ready the product actually is to be released to customers. Uh, we can see if the uh, quality of the product improved over time or not. Um, also, uh, yeah, test cases, they help us to uh, engage the new team members, especially if the system uh, is complicated. Uh, having the test cases that contain uh, detailed step-by-step -step instructions uh, makes it easy for a new person to be engaged in testing. Um, test cases, they also simplify management of the project. Uh, you can assign different roles to team members, uh, give them the, the only permissions they need, assign the test cases to the person that uh, will be executing them, so it's easy to um, divide the work. And um, test cases are good um, uh, when you want to automate uh, some tests. Uh, if the team is planning uh, to automate uh, testing, they can just go through the manual test, uh, test cases and pick uh, what ones uh, they need to automate. Um, but uh, of course, everything has its downsides. And um, one of the important ones uh, uh, for using test cases is uh, the fact that they take a lot of time uh, for uh, creation and maintenance. Since um, test cases are very detailed, and um, they cover a lot of possible scenarios. It's, of course, time consuming to create a whole bunch of them. And um, when the software will be changing uh, with time, uh, all those changes um, should be reflected uh, in new test cases or in just rewritten um, existing test cases. So maintenance also takes quite a bit of time. And there is also a danger of missing a bug uh, that requires more creative approach. And um, what I mean by that is uh, testing with test cases, it uh, restricts creativity a bit um, and freedom of actions uh, of a tester. Uh, but this is also solved uh, by applying exploratory testing. In addition, exploratory testing, it's an uh, unscripted, more creative type of testing. So just adding uh, these occasional exploratory sessions, it helps uh, with this problem. Uh, so to so summarize, Rina, yeah. I, I have a question for uh, our attendees. Yeah. Maybe if they didn't uh, know how uh, to use a test case, um, in your past of tester, like uh, your experience, um, is it challenging to get used to create uh, uh, case test test cases or to use a new test case management tool uh, mm -hmm. for you if it's a uh, just need to be more cautious about uh, creation of a test case or is is it really challenging to discover this new way to do mm -hmm. um well, I guess um, if it's a first tool that has been used, it may be like a bit hard to get used to it. Uh, but still, it won't uh, take weeks or even many days uh, to get used to a tool. I think, like, because test case management systems they are designed to kind of make our life easier, like the life of testers, uh, product managers. Uh, so. Uh, when you spend just a little time to learn the tool, to get used to it, you can see that it's pretty easy. And um, as you get to one tool, it's not difficult to switch to another because uh, like as much as all of them are different, uh, they still share common workflows. So I guess in general, it doesn't require a lot of efforts uh, to get used to a tool. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay. Yeah, and, uh, from my side, uh, in terms of time consuming, you mentioned it as a as a maybe possible problem. Um, mm -hmm. How shall it? Is it really much time? How, it's, how much it takes to create this case? I don't know for some simple application, web app, mobile app. Mm -hmm. um, again, it uh, it depends on the product. Uh, it depends on how many. Um, like how many forms, how many input you can uh, uh, generate, uh, how many diff possible uh, like flows it has, because they can there can be just few screens, but it still can have a lot of different 
a lot of different forms, fields, and it can still be take a lot of scenarios to check it. I guess like an average, uh, if it's a not complicated, uh, let's say app or website, I guess around a week can, uh, it's enough to cover uh, like basic positive, negative scenarios, I guess around that. And for one this case, how much it? Mm, for one test case, I would say like three, five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's pretty much test cases here for for us. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, based on um, all those uh, uh, pros and cons uh, that I um, said, uh, the uh, on these following types of projects, it's uh, very helpful to use test cases. Uh, when the project has uh, big or complicated functionality, uh, when no major redesign uh, is going to happen because uh, we'd need to rewrite cases. Uh, when the project has uh, high staff turnover, uh, also helpful when the project is going to be automated. And also uh, certain projects, for example, like medical uh, apps, they just demand having documented results of testing. So this case is helpful in this case too. Um, so uh, if um, the team uh, decided to write these cases, uh, they need a good tool <laughs> to make uh, the process easier. And uh, there is actually a big range of products on the market and depending on, on the team, um, on what goals uh, the team uh, will be setting uh, before the test case management system, uh, different teams may prefer different uh, options. Uh, but what is like general rule, rules, what is better to pay attention to is the following things. Uh, so first of all, uh, test case management tools, they should integrate with issue management tool and uh, the one that the organization uses. Uh, it will make easier to track um, and manage um, your project. Uh, then um, test case management uh, tool have to um, have to be simple, have to present a simple view of test cases, uh, but also it should offer um, kind of the ability to add more complexity uh, if it's needed in the future. Uh, also, user-friendly interface, uh, of course, is important. Easy creation of test suits, test cases, test runs. Um, also, uh, test uh, case uh, management system should provide uh, us with the ability to manage tasks, uh, assign them to different uh, testers. Um, uh, also, uh, it's a good idea to use um, uh, tools that are shipped with some like pre-configured dashboards uh, that can help to uh, get immediate insight into the progress and uh, the results. Uh, th uh, the tool should just cooperate and deliver the right information at the right time without the need to make extra efforts to get some information. Um, of course, it should be easy to install it and support. And it's also helpful um, uh, to have a possibility to import uh, the test cases that were created earlier in a different uh, test case management system. Um, so when using the right tools, um, taking into account um, the context of the project, uh, test cases can actually bring a lot of value uh, to the testing uh, process. Um, the team uh, will have a document that will contain all the requirements, uh, will be a basis for running tests, onboarding new team members, um, and um, making uh, the testing management also more effective and easy. Um, I guess, so that's uh, all for me. Please ask any questions if you have. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Alina. Very detailed one with a video. Just, just, just amazing. You prepared so much. Uh, yeah, I see some questions uh, around uh, scores from our attendees. Uh, I guess we'll come to it a bit uh, later. We'll definitely answer it. And uh, there is a question uh, from Avery about if there will be a reply uh, because the network is not too good. Yeah, we'll share the link 
afterwards. Uh, so in there too, all, all that, and this will be able to see the record uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, we can proceed. Uh, actually, a very interesting points uh, from Alina, why to use, why not, why not to use uh, test cases, uh, management uh, systems and test cases in general. Um, in terms of um, uh, our uh, further steps, we'll have a demo of uh, Squash where Marion will show us actually how it looks like, how the uh, system operates and uh, uh, what are key features uh, of the product. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, I have a small question for you guys before that. Uh, let's say I'm just uh, starting using test case management systems. Uh, let's say before that I never used it. I was just doing exploratory testing and uh, I was absolutely okay with that. Um, how easy or how complex uh, for me it will be to start using, let's say, Squash or any other similar system? Maran, super how how is it? Yeah, first of all, I will mention that uh, I will give you the link at the end of the presentation about uh, a live uh, demo online. So for people who are interested in uh, testing uh, Squash TM, it's possible to do so by connecting on our web website. And it's free because I uh, forget to mention it because uh, but uh, Squash TM is an open source uh, tool. So it's free to use if you want to check uh, how to create test cases and requirements and etc. It's really easy. And as we will see in the live demo of Marion, we'll see each workspace and uh, and kind of information you have to enter in Squash and in your test uh, solution are really easy to understand uh, thanks to color and different workspaces. After what, uh, there are a lot of possibility in our community website with a wiki uh, which is uh, dedicated uh, to new user or experienced user. Uh, it's about uh, like um, a Wikipedia, uh, and uh, you will have all the information uh, to guide you uh, to create test cases, etc. So um, I will uh, share to you the link, and uh, if you have more questions, we are we are here at the end or with uh, our web. Uh, mail or address, you, you will uh, feel free to ask it to us if you want. Yeah, yeah in this you'll have a contacts of uh, the Squash team, so we'll be able to contact them. And also, you'll see the contacts of uh, the guys uh, uh, the last slide of our today's presentation, so yeah, feel free to approach everyone. Uh, thank you, Sibo, for this, uh, let's call it trailer, yeah, for, for the demo. Uh, it shall be really quite interesting, so I'm giving the word to Marion. Please uh, go ahead with a great demo of this question. Yeah, let's go. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Marion uh, from uh, Squash Support Team, uh, and I'm working for Enix. So, uh, first of all, if you have any question during this demo, uh, feel free to interrupt me. So, Squash is a full web application, which means uh, no installation is needed on uh, each computer. This is the home page, so I've already uh, logged down. Um, here you can see a message that uh, you can customize. Um, wherever you are on the app, uh, you will always see uh, this top bar that gives you access to uh, my account and also to administration if you have enough uh, authorization. And you will also see this uh, left navigation bar that will give you access to uh, the three main workspaces uh, on Squash. So the requirements workspace, the test cases workspace, and the campaign uh, workspace. So let's start with the requirement workspace. So each workspaces uh, are built in the same way uh, on Squash. On the left, you will find a library of, uh, of elements. And on the right, you will find the consultation page of uh, the selection on the library. 
So um, Squash is a multi-project uh, application, uh, which means you can access several projects uh, at once. Uh, you just need to have the, the authorizations on, on those projects. In the library, the projects are displayed in, in black, and it's uh, actually a tree structure of, uh, of elements. So here uh, you can find uh, folders, subfolders, and uh, requirements. Um, so about uh, authorization, um, Users can, uh, so as I said, user can uh, can access a uh, different project of, at once, and they can either have uh, reading rights, uh, edit rights, or uh, managing rights on, on projects for each uh, workspaces. At the top of the of the library, you'll find uh, action buttons uh, to create, copy, paste rename, import, export from uh, Excel files, uh, research and, uh, and delete element uh, from, the, from the library. You cannot create an uh, and delete project from here, but you can, you can do, do it for, for folders and, and requirements. So now I'm going, going to select a requirement here. So here is the, the consultation page. So we can find several information about the, the requirements, uh, the name of the requirement. Uh, it's possible to add a reference if you want to organize it in the, in the library. Uh, there's also a status. Uh, if you want to, to add it. You can also add some attributes. So the criticality, uh, it's very important to, to qualify uh, requirements. So yeah, whether, uh, whether it's critical, major, minor. You can add a, a category uh, to, to requirements. And you can also add some uh, customized fields. Uh, label is one of them. So if you want to, to add more information, more specific information, uh, you can do it. And those custom fields can be uh, tags fields, or plain text fields, or numeric fields, or lists. Uh, you have a whole lot of, of possibilities. And uh, you also can add a description uh, to your requirements. Um, this field is actually what we call a rich text field. So you can add some colors, uh, you can put some text in bold. So, so yeah, this is, a, this is the a rich text field. And each field uh, are uh, click to edit fields. So pretty easy to, to use. On this uh, consultation page, you also have uh, this section. Uh, to link requirements to one or several test cases. Uh, so this is a bi-directional link. Uh, we are going to, to see later on the test cases uh, workspace how it works, how the, the link between uh, test case and, uh, and requirement works. You can also uh, add some attachments to, to requirements, but also to pretty much every object in Squash, so to project, to folders, to test cases, to campaigns. Um, and so it's, it's managed here in this tab. So that's it for the, for the requirement workspace. Let's continue. Can I ask you a small question? Yeah, sure. Um, so yes. we can um, clone uh, the whole requirements uh, folder, like the whole folder for the project, and yeah. then can just add it, uh, use it for like a base for another project, right? Yeah, yeah, you can you can copy and paste uh, a whole folder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kocha. Oh, yes, well, uh, not a question, just an interruption for, from my side. Uh, I see a lot of questions uh, in our chat uh, around Squash. Uh, yes, well, uh, answer them right after finishing the demo, like in five, 10 minutes. 
uh, we'll make sure to answer all the questions. So yeah, yeah, please don't panic. It will be okay. Uh, yeah, Mario, please, uh, please press it. Okay, so let's continue with the test cases workspace. So as you can see, it's the same layout, uh, but with a different color, uh, green this time. So uh, here we have a tree structure of test cases this time. So this is a test case. We have uh, more facts than we had in the, in the requirement workspace. So the first tab is uh, information. Uh, we'll find the name of the test case, uh, the reference, the description. Uh, so what, uh, what the, the test case uh, has to check. Uh, status, of course. Um, so, uh, is the is the test a work in progress? It, does it have to be uh, updated? We also have some attributes. So, the weight, the importance, uh, nature, and the type uh, of the test. Is it an evolution test, a correction test, a regression test? And then we have the, the prerequisite uh, precondition. And on this, uh, on this section, we have the, uh, once again, the, the link to, uh, to, to requirements. So it's, it's the same thing that, we, that we've seen in the, in the requirements workspace. So this time, I'm going to show you how the link uh, works. So you just have to click here. You access this uh, this page. So here we have uh, the library of uh, requirements. So you just have to choose uh, which requirements or requirements uh, you want to link to the to the to the test case. You select it and just with a drag and drop, you put it here, and here it is uh, linked to the to the test case. Um, so Squash is a, is a multi-project uh, application, but it is also an inter-project uh, application, which means if you have enough uh, authorization on, on two projects, uh, you can share elements uh, between those two projects, and so you can link uh, requirements from another project to uh, test cases from, from, from this project. So here I'm going to delete the link just by clicking this button here. Okay, so the next tab uh, for the test cases is the script tab with uh, all the steps of the of the test case, all the all the instructions uh, you have to follow in order to, to complete the test. So there are two uh, main fields. Uh, the first one is action what you have to do. And uh, the second one is expected results, uh, where you will compare what you see to what you are uh, expecting to, to see. So the, these steps can be copied and passed, uh, can also be reorganized uh, if necessary. Then uh, we can add, um, sometimes we, we can need to, to add uh, parameters uh, in, uh, in, in steps, sorry. Um, so this is uh, a parameter here, brother, that we will find in this tab, just right here. And then we can uh, define some uh, some values uh, for for this parameter in data sets. And when we do so, if we go back to the script, you see this little formula here. Um, during the, the execution of the test, this formula here will be replaced by the value defined uh, in the in the data sets here so so this way you don't have to to copy and paste your uh, your test case and gen, just change the value uh, it will be automatically replaced uh, during the execution 
Oh, can I ask you, so when we're executing the such test case, yeah. uh, we can select uh, the value or will it be like generated automatically? You can do both. You can select it, but usually uh, when you um, link, uh, when you add, sorry, a test case to uh, an execution plan, it will be added for this example, we have three data sets. Uh, it will be added three times uh, each time with a, with a different data set. And then, of oh. course, you can you can choose which which ones you want to. If you don't want to to, to run all the test case, you, you you can choose, but uh, yeah, usually that's uh, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Pretty clear. Okay. Um, so next, let's talk about the the research. Uh, so it also applies for the the requirement workspace. So you can do some research uh, about test cases, about the following criteria. So about project, about uh, general information about history, about properties, um, about content, association, custom fields. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty complete uh, feature. And another feature that we can find in, in the three workspaces is uh, when you select a project a folder on several test cases, you can display a dashboard um, with, some, uh, with some charts um, that will give you information uh, about uh, so often test cases uh, will tell you uh, how many test cases are linked to uh, several requirements or to one requirement or to, to no requirements. Uh, some information about status, about uh, importance, and about uh, the size of the test cases. And um, if you want to, to see, for example, uh, which are the, the test, te test cases uh, that have the status work in progress, you can just click uh, on the portion of the chart here and the two, um, the two test cases will be displayed as uh, as a search results, so you can see right away what are the two the two test cases. Okay, so I think that's it for the for the test case uh, workspace. Yeah, uh, Marianne, uh, can I ask a question about yeah, sure. uh, show the roles? Uh, uh, when it's for the statistics, I guess it's mainly interesting for let's say test managers, the client uh, set. Uh, yeah. If it's possible in squash to also to divide the roles, you know, yeah, for those who can just watch, who can uh, manage, change, uh, execute. execute. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. To, to manage rights. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have oh. a, an administration page. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, to add some rights to some testers, it's possible. As said, uh, as said at the beginning, uh, you have different kind of rights. So you can read only uh, a kind of type of test case. You can edit them or you can manage them. So it depends on your status, on your profile. You can see or not see some information. But the manager has a global profile status. That uh, means the, he, he could uh, manage all of the information and share with some of uh, his testers from his team. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, it, and it, works for, um, it works per workspace. So a user can have, for example, a reading rights on uh, the requirements and test case workspace, but have uh, edit rights on the, on the campaign workspace. So yeah, it's quite flexible, they see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Marianne. Okay, so now the third uh, workspace, so the campaign workspace. Um, this time we'll see a tree structure of uh, campaigns here and iteration here. So in Squash, uh, a campaign is defined by all the test uh, cycles that are run on an application uh, before its release and an iteration is uh, one of this uh, cycle. 
So the main thing is in uh, iteration uh, is the execution plans uh, where you will see the, the list of the test cases that you have to, to run. Uh, so here it is. Uh, in this test execution plan, we have some uh, some information. So the reference of the test case, uh, its name, its weight, the name of the of the of the data set is if there is one, uh, the execution status, um, the name of the the user who last executed the the test. You can also uh, assign some tests to to users. Um, and then the, the date of the last uh, execution. So to add um, some tests to the, to the execution plan, it works pretty much in the same way that it, it did for, to link uh, test cases to, to requirements. So here we find uh, the, the library of uh, test cases, and we just have to select uh, the test case we want to add uh, in the test plan. So here we're going to select uh, the test with the three data sets uh, that we saw earlier. And when an, I had it, it has been added three times because um, I have three different data sets. But if I want to, I can remove um, one of them. So I, once my uh, my execution plan is ready, uh, I can uh, start to to execute the the test case. So to execute the uh, a test case, uh, we just have to click on the name of the test case and new execution. Uh, there there is also a shortcut here from the from the execution plan uh, on this button. So we'll click on new execution. On this page, we'll see a recap of the of the test case with uh, the description, the prior conditions, and uh, the script with the different steps. And to start the execution, we just have to click to on execute. So it will the test will be displayed on this pop up. Um, the first screen shows uh, once again the description of the test case and the preconditions. And when we are we are all set, uh, we can click on begin. Then we will have um, a screen per uh, per step. The the number of the the step is uh, is right here. Uh, we that's where we will start uh, executing the test, and that where we'll see if uh, if the expected result is matching the what we what we see when uh, when we when we execute the test. If it's OK, we can just select uh, this, the execution status uh, passed here and then click on the arrow to go to the next uh, step. Or we can directly clear this button here to access the next step. We can also add some, uh, some comments uh, here. So now let's say uh, we found a bug. Uh, the expected result is not matching uh, what we are actually seeing. So Squash doesn't come with uh, its own bug tracker, but uh, can be linked to um, most of the, the known bug tracker uh, on the market. Like Yeah, it was, uh, uh, by the way, we have had a question from Iran uh, asking yeah. about is it uh, possible to integrate this uh, JIRA? Yeah, absolutely. JIRA yeah, so it can be connected to, to Jira, to Redmine, to Mantis, to um, Bugzilla, and some others. Um, so here for, for this demo, we are connected to, to Jira. So usually you have to log on uh, Jira. Uh, there's a button here. Uh, I've already uh, logged on before. So once it's done, you have uh, this report an issue button. So you just have to click it. And uh, a pop-up uh, will be displayed where you have the possibility to report a new defect. So first, you have uh, to, in the Squash administration, to link your uh, Squash project to uh, a Jira project or several Jira projects. So you select the Jira project. 
and then uh, you will uh, you will see here all the Jira fields uh, that will be displayed. It's it's basically a view of uh, of your um, of your uh, Jira uh, of of the Jira project. So you just have to um, type uh, something in the in the fields. So that's what I'm going to do here. And when you're done, you can also send uh, some uh, attachments from here if necessary. And once you're done, you just click Add. And the, the issue will appear, will appear here in, uh, in this table with the link to, uh, to Jira, to the, to the Jira issue uh, page. From this pop-up here, you also have the possibility to attach uh, an existing defect uh, in Jira. So you just have to type uh, the key uh, of the defect uh, right here. So once you're done with your, with your execution, well, you will see the recap uh, with the, the status has been uh, updated here. I reported a bug here, so you have this little uh, icon. You have also the recap right here. And we will find uh, an overall status uh, of the test case. So here uh, it's in failure because I have one step uh, in failure. Um, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, when we execute in the test case, uh, can we see all steps at once? Yes, uh, yes, from this page, so I was just uh, right here. If you don't uh -huh. want to, to execute uh, step by step uh, the tests, um, yeah, you can just uh, oh, we can apply, select uh, statuses, apply yeah. a status here from, from this page and yeah, and the, the overall status will be uh, updated also. Oh, got you, thanks. And uh, yeah, from from this page, uh, but also in the uh, test case and, and requirements workspace, you have this uh, known issues tab that will show you um, all the issues that have been uh, reported uh, on well here on the on the iteration. But you also have the information uh, for a requirement for a test case for a campaign. So uh, so yeah. So I think that's it for the for the campaign workspace. Uh, we'll finish with uh, another workspace, uh, the management workspace, uh, from where you can uh, create uh, reporting elements. So you can create uh, reports uh, that are basically book reports. Uh, you can find uh, test case reports, requirement re reports, for example. So those reports are um, usually with, uh, have usually a, a Word format or PDF format. It's also possible to create uh, custom charts um, with uh, without. So several steps uh, will guide you, will guide you uh, for the, the charts creation. Uh, it can be about pretty much every object uh, in Squash. And finally, it's possible to create uh, dashboards. So a dashboard is a combination of charts and uh, reports. And to, to create it, you, you just have to drag and drop uh, some reporting elements, so some charts or some reports. And you can uh, you can arrange it uh, as you like. And you can, uh, if you want to, you can display those uh, custom dashboards uh, instead of the, the default dashboard in each uh, workspace of Squash. So I think that's it for the for the demo. Yeah. I would like just to add uh, some information about uh, some of the questions we have in the in the chat. Yeah, we have, uh, as Marion said, uh, a Jira add-on, our plugin. 
which can interact with uh, with Squash. So I just want to share with you um, some information about our license because we are free uh, from his, uh, its open source core, but we have also, and it will be asked, uh, answered the uh, first uh, question we had about the number of users we can uh, that can use uh, Squash TM uh, in a company. So here we have um, a table that uh, is on our commercial website. I will show you the link at the end. So you can see that we can have a, a number of uh, users which will be, will be different according to your needs. And uh, the fee is different uh, if you want to use it for 50 people or, or less or more, it depends. And uh, just to show you that Bug Tracker's plugin are only in the commercial version, so in pro or premium version. And there are also additional plugins which are included in the premium version. So, and uh, the support is also um, more, uh, more extended for premium version. But if you want just a quick recap, uh, here are the bug tracker uh, plugin uh, that are included in the commercial version. You also have a Polarion requirement and Redman requirement plugin, uh, an execution plan wizard which uh, will automatically generate new execution plans from uh, the campaign results. Campaign and result iter uh, campaign reporting and iteration reporting are also part of uh, a commercial um, uh, license. So it's uh, pretty much how uh, all the things you you will uh, you will have in the in the commercial license. But if you want to try it another time, I will let you know that it's possible for free to get used to to test cases and uh, requirement in workspace in uh, in special in squash tm here are just information about uh, your potential needs uh, in the future with squash tm so that's all for our presentation and uh, i let uh, stan uh, ask question or, or yeah see if you have thank you questions. Thank you. Just uh, this great demo. Thank you, Marion. Uh, thank you, Sibo, as well, for showing uh, some pros, uh, some benefits of uh, those uh, commercial version which you guys have. Uh, I believe it's really useful one because it uh, has a lot of extensions and with a lot of benefits. And for uh, some big and more complex projects, it uh, should be quite quite useful. Uh, I have a question about the demo. You actually showed it in English. Uh, is it possible? To, is it this course goes actually with any other languages? Yeah. Uh, so it depends on the the language of uh, your browser. Uh, so Squash can be put it in in English, in French, in German, and in Spanish. Oh, cool. Big variety. Uh, thanks, thank you very much. So let's, uh, I guess, uh, let's proceed with the questions from our um, attendees, from those who watched the demo. I see a lot of uh, different feedbacks. First of all, for all those guys who just uh, show us uh, big fingers, thank you very much for uh, your feedback. We are proud that if you're happy. Um, so in terms of uh, amount of users for one company, actually, they've already answered the question. As I understand, for commercial version, there can be the restrictions uh, depending on uh, uh, actually the license. Yeah, and uh, for open source one, actually, it can be used by as many users as, as you wish. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. But we have some key accounts with more than 50, uh, 500 of uh, users. so. If needed, uh, there are commercial lessons for uh, each needs, and uh, it's possible to use it with a uh, big, big team. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have a question how, from Marina. How the test case and use case differs? I, I guess it's just maybe a more general one. Uh, Alina, maybe you could answer. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> And they actually a lot uh, different. Uh, use case is a more broad term. Uh, it just it's, <clears throat> um, describes uh, one of the possible scenarios. For example, uh, the use case uh, can be, as a user, I want to 
uh, be able to edit my profile info or stuff like that. But test case, you can edit uh, the info and input a lot of different data. Uh, you can uh, also like um, uh, add some additional like negative scenarios, some ways to interrupt it, to break it, so, like without the internet connection. So test case, there are more. Um, uh, they cover this very small. Uh, usage cases, uh, like possible scenarios of how we use it, and a use case is just very a more broad term, just one uh, possible way of what user uh, will be doing with the software. OK, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, the question from Ostap, where it's possible to download this question, I believe, uh, on the guy's website. But uh, as Siba mentioned, he'll share the link here. To yeah. yeah. So, so you can uh, so you can try our online demo. So with no no need to to download uh, to download the to download Squash. Uh, you can do it on our website. I will add you in the chat another yeah. uh, another website which yeah. is known as the community website. Yeah. And uh, with the link with all the the Squash TM version and the uh, plugin version, you can uh, download. So I, I put it right now yeah. in, we'll, your, we'll in your in your right in your chat. Oh yeah, yeah. It's so now. there is a link, and you are all all the information in this uh, in this website, and also an access to the wiki I mentioned before. So if you want to have more information about uh, Squash TM use, uh, it's easy with this link too. We also have a forum, so if you want to to ask some yeah. some question, uh, yeah, feel free to use it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Marat uh, Simo, thanks for the answers. Uh, how you guys differ from existing uh, solutions like this trail? Uh, the question uh, from Yana. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for this question, I, I will not um, choose to make the difference between. Uh, one test system, test management system, or another one. I just mentioned that uh, uh, Squash TM is a um, is a tool which is designed for tester. That means that it's uh, an evolving tool uh, which can be connected, uh, and we don't have time to show it today. But with uh, Squash TM, which is another uh, solution for automation test, uh, it's also uh, a, a test management system which is uh, designed to make uh, life of tester easier. As for instance, as uh, Marion shows you uh, in, uh, in the demo with uh, the um, uh, report and charts, which can be uh, uh, genera generated auto automatically, automatically, thanks to um, without or uh, some other stuff like this. So it's really normally it's really easy to to use it, and you also have a lot of information. Uh, and support. Uh, if you go to the forum, uh, Marion uh, asked before. So it's like a big community to help you to manage your test uh, easily. Yeah. So it's just easier, simpler for users. Yeah, and uh, it has a lot of support for you to understand how it works in any cases. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, we have a question. First of all, we have uh, one also. Compliment for us that it's our presentation. Uh, thanks, Karu uh, Gay. Um, and uh, the question from Amar Dasquash uh, allows me to map uh, requirements with uh, test cases and track the progress. Uh, yeah, so you can, as I showed, you can link uh, requirements to, to test cases. Uh, and from them, we can yeah pretty much follow. Uh, yeah, and to track the progress, the uh, you have you all can, the all the dashboard. Yeah, uh, you can you can build your own dashboards with uh, with your own charts. You so you can follow the, the evolution. Yeah, and uh, we didn't uh, have the time to show you, but for each workspace, you have charts, you have a dashboard. Which are generated uh, very automatically, automatically, and um, that allows you to see, for instance, the coverage indicator between uh, the number of uh, requirements that are verified by uh, test cases, etc. So all of this is monitored, and uh, a reporting uh, are available uh, on the tool. Just have to refresh the page, and uh, you have it. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for those answers. Uh, I guess. Uh, 
that's all for now in terms of questions from our attendees. Um, and uh, I have uh, maybe the last one from my side for all of you guys. Uh, so actually, why if I'm the genius of Excel and uh, I've created a great spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why actually not to use uh, those spreadsheets to track the test cases and why to use the state management systems? I guess it's a question of, for, for both uh, Alina and for Marion, for Sibon. And if you will just say, okay, it's better to use spreadsheets, so we'll just finish it all and we'll never do webinars again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good news. If you if you work on Excel, uh, you can you can import your uh, your Excel test cases on Squash. So <laughs> yeah, that's already good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like maybe if you have well, like ten or fifty test cases, you can manage them in Excel uh, to some extent. But when yeah. it's like thousands of test cases, complicated pro project, uh, complicated structure, it's like um, you'll make your life only harder if you will be using uh, just spreadsheets. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Alina. Thanks, Seba and Marion. Uh, I guess we'll finish. Uh, remember, uh, Alex, uh, could you please show our contact? Yeah. Uh, by the way, dear attendees, with us uh, today is also Alex. You can't see him, but uh, he is our technical guide, uh, the guy who helps us to switch uh, the slides to manage all this uh, stuff and uh, uh, sometimes to answer, to chat you to the chat actually. So uh, if you enjoyed the webinar, you also have to say thank you to him. And if you hated the webinar, you also have to hate him as well. Uh, so uh, uh, that's it for today. Uh, you can see the contacts. Please approach uh, Phoenix uh, or test lab directly if you I would have some other questions we are glad to answer for any time. Uh, you'll have the record, so we'll make sure to share it with uh, all those ones who have the emails or who have registered for the webinar before. Uh, we'll, we'll continue with our webinars in the future, so please uh, pay attention to the emails we are sending to you with the information. And uh, have a very good end of the day or beginning of the day, depending on where you are. If there's someone from the US, guys, uh, wish a great Thanksgiving day, which is upcoming. Uh, and uh, have a great end of the week. Bye. Thanks, Thank everyone. You, Thank you. Goodbye, Bye. everyone.